Hi folks, welcome to another episode of NYC CNC. Today I want to talk about CNC and machine coolant systems. I don't know why, but for some reason, maybe it's just the growth of the channel, over the past three months I've had a ton of emails uh, inbound about the system that I use on my Tormach CNC mill. I always try to reply to every email I get and every YouTube comment, which I love, but it's frustrating because I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I just need to get a video done on, on my coolant system. So this is that. Um, to cut to the chase, I use what's called a Trico MD1200. There are links below in the video to this one and a bunch of other stuff on CNC coolant systems. And I'm going to talk about the various types of CNC coolant in this video. But to focus on the unit I use for a second, I purchased it. Um, I was telling people I purchased it uh, with my when I bought my Tormach for a bunch of reasons I'll mention in a second. But I remember then uh, I'm misremembering the past. I bought it back in Manhattan, New York City with my little tag machine uh, because I definitely couldn't use flood coolant with it. I had a little underpowered um, air compressor, but it at least helped clear the chips. And that, folks, is really the theme of today's video for us type of machinists. You know, we're not running these huge multi-million dollar vertical machining centers that optimize maximum material removal rates and tool life and crazy scientific stuff where, where a lot of the three elements of cooling matter what we're doing is trying to really get the chips out. Um, those three elements, in my opinion, are chip evacuation, we'll go into this more, lubricating, so actual lubrication between the cut, uh, the cutting shoot, uh, the cutting flute and the workpiece, and then actual coolant, meaning that either cooling the workpiece or the tool itself. So the Trico was great for me in Manhattan because it was quiet, it made no mess, and it helped get the chips out when I was making things with the tag. I kept it with the Tormach. First off, it's an expensive unit. I think it's about $600. I own the one that does not have the automatic solenoid, but for 10 bucks or 20 bucks, you can purchase a 110 air solenoid, which is easy to plumb in, and that uh, plugs right in the Tormach controller, so it turns on and off like a coolant system would, uh, like the enclosed flood coolant. Um, but I love it for the Tormach. The first reason I loved it for the Tormach was that when I bought my Tormach, there were going to be weeks I didn't use the machine. It's funny to think back on that, but I had a day job at the time, and I loved machining, but it was something I would do in spurts. And I knew uh, enough to be scared of flood coolant. Maybe for the wrong reasons, but it seemed intimidating. And what I had heard was things like rust and it gets skanky or whatever the correct word is for it. But basically it evaporates, so the mix of water to coolant changes, and um, if it's not stirred or agitated, it can get pretty nasty and smelly. And uh, But rust was the really big one. I, I am the kind of guy where I want to be able to walk down, turn the machine on, and just resume like I had never stopped, even if that was a 20-day idle period. And the thought of doing long-term damage to my vices or tooling plate or mill bed wasn't that much fun. And again, I'm not trying to psych anybody out because flood coolant is phenomenal, but I already had this Trico and so I kept using it. And then the other huge thing for me is it makes the video so much easier because there's not literally opaque liquid interrupting the view of the cut. I also love the Trico. It's what's called an MQL, Minimal Quantity Lubrication. That's the more scientific, you know, in the know terminology. I'll come back to it. Um, but I love it because it blends in a little bit of oil or lubricant and air. And you can adjust that ratio on both the two nozzles. So I like it because go back to the video we just did on manufacturing an 80% AR lower. You've got a inch and a half deep pocket only you know, five eighths or something three quarter inch wide you need a lot of pressure to get the chips out of there and in that particular example you normally would not have machined the trigger uh, guard sh uh, the, sh the trigger shoe out um, so the if you're using flood coolant it's going to pull up inside of there which is actually okay it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world but um, what you want to avoid for folks like us that are, again, we're machinists, we might be making products and doing great, but we are not, you know, we are not teaching Boeing how to get more uh, material removal or tool life. Um, you got to stop recutting the chips, chip evacuation. When you recut chips, it affects surface finish, it can double or, or triple your uh, chip load, and it can wear out tools, it can cause shock, uh, sh load shock, not 
temp shock. Um, it's just, it's the number one, I think, problem for accuracy and cut finish and tool life that we are gonna experience. So getting the chips out of there, huge. High pressure air will do that. And if you don't wanna buy one of these things, you would actually be almost better off, and actually before I had this thing, I literally had my air compressor plumbed into lock line, and I would just sit there with a little button and, and zap it to blow the chips out. Actually worked pretty darn good. Um, so that's the number one thing. Uh, lubrication is also important. I don't wanna discredit that. Likewise, cooling can be important, but again, for most of us, I think, in my opinion, it's getting the chips out of there. Um, so let's talk about different types of cooling real quick. Um, most people know flood cooling. The Tormach stand comes with a great flood cooling system. I never used it because I had the Trico and before I had the enclosure, I mean, I only just got the enclosure, um, I didn't want to create a huge mess. Again, I was in the basement of my house. The laundry machines were not that far from the mill. Um, I just didn't want the mess. So um, right now, if I wasn't filming, the videos and I had the enclosure, I'd probably switch to the flood coolant system. Um, I would also consider um, a higher PSI because I, I don't want to bracket flood cooling into like two brackets, but there is sort of low pressure and, and high pressure. And if you've ever seen a, a vertical machining center in person, you know those things are like fire hoses in there. I mean, it is crazy high pressure. Again, going back to chip evacuation. Uh, but the Tormach was great. I actually have loved it on the lathe. We'll get back to that in a second. Um, and then the question is what coolant to buy. And you know, I'm not going to weigh in on that because I've never done it and it would be BS of me to comment on it. But um, I know Brad from Tactical Key Change has had a great experience with um, some learning curves and I think Grimsmo as well on what works, what doesn't cause problems and what does a good job cooling. So hopefully you guys and others will comment below on what coolants you like. Um, what I don't like about, about this is it's kind of like, you know, cleaning a gun. There are lots of opinions, lots of strong opinions, and it doesn't help you guys when someone, when there are 14 different um, recipes below. And sometimes I think the best answer is just for someone to tell you what to do and go do it rather than give you a ton of options. So um, what else, other cool types of coolants are there? So there's, like I said, there's flood coolant, high and low pressure, and then what we do, which is called MQL, Minimal Quantity Lubrication, which is actually quite scientific. And one of the reasons I bought the Trico unit, sorry, it's above the tool changer right now, I gotta get that thing installed, is it actually can have incredible results and it uses very little coolant. A gallon of it's about a hundred bucks, but um, that little cup that, I have no idea, maybe it's a fifth of a gallon, um, probably will last me three to five months of using the machine a lot, you know, numerous hours each day. So the cost is almost negligible or, or nothing. And um, you can get great results. And I remember way back in the day, like 2007, 2008, one of the guys on CNC Zone, I think it was Jeff or Joff, who has you know, four or 5,000 posts and has posted lots of pictures of proving he's a very good machinist, had used one and had really good things to say about it. And it was that sort of social proof of seeing a a really good but still humble machinist say, hey, this thing is great. Got me over the curve to spend that much money on something. My understanding is the Fog Buster is pretty similar. Um, I don't have any firsthand experience with it, so I don't wanna totally vouch for it, but it's half the price. So if you're interested in something similar but a little bit less expensive, definitely check out the Fog Buster. S stay away from what's called misters, and that's actually where Fog Buster, I think, gets its name, is they don't want the fog. Misters create fog and seems to be a pretty direct correlation between that and some pretty significant health risks. So stay away from those. Um, the other cool stuff, and you guys may not know all this um, because this is a little bit more of the hardcore machinist side, but nowadays there's some really cool options out there. And the, the biggest one that comes to mind is through spindle coolant. That's where you're not using flood coolant, but rather you're actually piping coolant through the spindle of the machine and then out the tool. So these drill bits, you obviously have to buy tooling that supports or has through spindle coolant support to it. These drill bits have these little tips at the end and these holes. And so when the drill starts to turn, it's turning. Uh, you see this coolant uh, hose fly out or the coolant fly out. Really cool. I mean, it's a very, very simple solution to the problem of getting coolant exactly where you need it to provide cooling, lubrication, and most importantly, 
chip evacuation. For deep hole drilling, um, you can't beat having the coolant flushing out from the point of the cut up the flutes of the drill and out. Pretty darn cool, right? Not cheap, but uh, I think the guys who use it will tell you um, it's, it's not an option. They have to have it. And through spindle cool, it supports other things. Uh, I think boring bars, certain types of end mills. You can actually have it, I think, in the collets or other ways of having it in the tool holder itself so it can sort of stay close to it. Um, to back up a second, instead of, for flood cooling, there's also, um, like Haas has become pretty well known for its P-Cool, which is a programmable nozzle, which I think just pulls in the tool height offset from the tool height database. And it basically knows, okay, well, if you went from a two inch tool to a six inch tool, I need to change the angle of my coolant nozzle so that the coolant is aimed at it. That's pretty cool. And actually one of the projects I've got on the medium burner, not gonna happen this month, but, but hopefully soon, is to make one of those with an Arduino for the Tormach. Um, I'm not sure how I'm gonna do it, whether to try to tie into the mock database or I may actually just try to use a ping or height sensor to detect the distance off the workpiece and have it sort of adjust, but it should be really fun uh, Arduino project. With the lathe, flood coolant is great. You guys already saw it in the first video I published on the lathe. Um, it makes sense that the lathe is enclosed and uh, cooling on a lathe is a lot easier than a mill in the sense that you've got a lot better control of access to the workpiece. So on the turret, there are these little dimples that point the coolant. I've actually just ordered these little brass extenders that will that you can bend in shape so you can hook it around and get it right where you want it. Going back to some of the types of coolants, I had a, one of the first times I got to spend you know a few hours in a real machine shop was eight or ten years ago, and my wife's uncle in Connecticut has a pretty legit shop, and he was telling a story about how their coolant salesman, which is a fact of how important coolant is, there are people whose whole lives are dedicated just to selling this stuff. Um, they were tapping, they were rigid peck tapping. So the material was so hard that they would rigid tap a little bit, come out and go back in. Pretty cool machine capability. And they were having problems. I don't remember if the tap was breaking or short tool life or the part problems, but the uh, coolant guy had an answer, which again, pretty cool that coolant can solve that sort of a problem. And he came in and he said, okay, you let me, let me set up the machine. You guys go, go, go away for a few minutes. And they do and he comes back and they run like five or ten parts and it's working great and uh john my sort of relative was like okay so so what's the coolant what's the answer like i'm you know okay you 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 win i'm, I'm you've got my attention and the, the salesman the salesman reaches to the part takes a big honking lick of it and it goes like that and it's a vegetable oil based coolant um so pretty funny there's there's there are natural and organic coolants, there's a lot of synthetic coolants, there's more viscous and more runny, um, tons out there. I, I don't want to act like I can't, can tell you more because I can't, but one of the things I did want to mention is never been a big fan of when folks, um, you know, borrow content and uh, Bob Warfield over at CNC Cookbook has a great blog page on um, this topic and I made my notes for this video first. And then I went and I reread his page, which I hadn't read in quite some time. And there's a lot of things that he talks about that um, that I don't get into here because I didn't want to, uh, you know, you know, I didn't want to ride on Bob's coattails. So I would encourage you guys to go to Bob's website, read through that page, some great information, um, and and take it from there. And yeah, let me know if you guys have questions, if you're interested in more, if there's things I can tell you or help you, I'm happy to do so in the comments below. Otherwise, I uh, appreciate you guys watching. Take care and I will see you soon.